The abdomen is a part of the body sometimes casually referred to as the belly or torso. The organs within this area are said to be contained within a space known as the abdominal cavity, which is bounded by the musculoaponeurotic walls anterolaterally. Superiorly, the abdominal cavity extends into the thoracic cage to the fourth intercostal space and is separated from the thoracic cavity by the diaphragm. Some organs found within the upper region of the abdominal cavity, such as the spleen, liver, stomach, and parts of the kidneys, are actually protected by your rib cage. Inferiorly, the lower portion of the abdominal cavity doesn't have a physical boundary because it's continuous with the pelvic cavity. So sometimes they're lumped together under the term abdominopelvic cavity. However, to better understand the anatomy, the inferior boundary, which separates the abdominal cavity from the pelvic cavity, is an imaginary plane called the pelvic inlet, which divides the pelvis into a greater or false pelvis above and a lesser or true pelvis below. Similar to how the rib cage protects some of the superior organs of the abdominal cavity, the greater pelvis protects some of the lower organs of the abdomen, including portions of the ilium, cecum, appendix, and sigmoid. You may have already noticed how many organs there are inside the abdominal cavity, so to make it easier to describe their location, the abdomen is often divided into anatomical quadrants, of which there are four, or regions, of which there are nine. Let's start with the quadrants. To get those four quadrants, imagine a line running down from the xiphoid process, or tip of the sternum, all the way down to the pubic symphysis. This line is the median plane and divides the abdomen into a left and a right half. The second imaginary line goes straight through the belly button, or umbilicus, from left to right. This line creates the transverse, or transumbilical plane, and divides the abdomen into an upper and lower half. So the resulting quadrants are the right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, and the left lower quadrant. Now that we understand how the quadrants are divided, let's see what abdominal organs are contained within each quadrant. Large organs located in the right upper quadrant are the right lobe of the liver, the gallbladder, the head of the pancreas, the first to third part of the duodenum, and the right colic flexor, while large organs located in the left upper quadrant are the left lobe of the liver, stomach, spleen, body of the pancreas, as well as the left colic flexor. In the right lower quadrant, there's the ascending colon, cecum, and appendix, and the lower portion of the right kidney, while the left lower quadrant contains the descending and sigmoid colon and lower portion of the left kidney. Finally, remember that the lower quadrants are also home to the ureters, which carry urine from the kidney to the bladder, as well as the internal reproductive structures, which are different between sexes. So in genetically female individuals, the lower quadrants also contain the ovaries and parts of the uterus, while in genetically male individuals, the spermatic cords can be found. In comparison to the four-quadrant system, the anatomy of the abdominal cavity can also be described using the regional system, which divides the abdomen into nine distinct regions. If you've ever played tic-tac-toe, you already know how to do that. You need two vertical or sagittal planes intersecting with two transverse or horizontal planes. In other words, imagine vertical or sagittal lines descending from the middle of the left and right clavicle, these are known as the midclavicular lines. Next, imagine there are also two horizontal or transverse lines. The first line goes from left to right, just below the 10th rib's costal cartilage, and is therefore known as the subcostal plane. The second horizontal line, which forms the transtubercular plane, starts at the iliac tubercles on each side of the pelvis and passes through the L5 vertebrae. Just as a reminder, the iliac tubercles are located at the widest portion of the outer border of the pelvis or iliac crest and are approximately five centimeters posterior to the anterior superior iliac spine. These four anatomical lines define the boundaries of the nine abdominal regions and the three regions formed in the midline are slightly larger than the six other regions on the left and the right of the midline. Before we move on, it's important to note that sometimes the transpyloric plane is used to define the superior boundary of the nine regions instead of the subcostal plane. The transpyloric plane passes through the L1 vertebrae midway between the superior manubrium of the sternum and the pubic symphysis and is slightly higher than the subcostal plane found at L3. 
The transpyloric plane is a landmark for many abdominal structures, such as the lower portion of the stomach, known as the pylorus, the hyla of the kidneys, the fundus of the gallbladder, the neck of the pancreas, the transverse colon, the junction between the duodenum and the jejunum, as well as the superior mesenteric artery and the hepatic portal vein. So to wrap up, let's see where the abdominal or abdominopelvic organs can be found in relation to these nine regions. Let's begin with the middle three regions from top to bottom. At the top, you have the epigastric region, which, as the name suggests, mainly contains the upper portion of the stomach. Parts of the esophagus, liver, pancreas, duodenum, and spleen can also be found here. Below the epigastric region is the umbilical region, which contains most of the small intestine and part of the large intestine and the pancreas, as well as parts of the left and right kidneys. Directly below the umbilical region is the hypogastric region. Here you can find the sigmoid colon, bladder, rectum, and reproductive organs, such as the uterus, ovaries, and prostate. And for a quick break, can you think of a time the uterus might be in another region? That's right, by the end of pregnancy, the uterus can extend into all nine regions of the abdomen. On either side of these central regions, going from top to bottom, there are the right and left hypochondriac regions, the right and left lumbar regions, and the right and left inguinal or iliac regions. The right hypochondriac contains the right part of the liver, gallbladder, large and small intestine, and parts of the right kidney, whereas the left hypochondriac region contains the spleen, parts of the left kidney, and portions of the stomach, pancreas, and colon. The right lumbar region is below the right hypogastric region and contains lower parts of the gallbladder and liver, right kidney, and ascending colon. On the left side, the left lumbar region contains portions of the descending colon and left kidney. Finally, there are the right and left inguinal or iliac regions. The right region contains the appendix and cecum, in contrast to the left iliac region, which contains the descending and sigmoid colon. All right, as a quick recap, the abdominal cavity's superior border is the diaphragm, and its inferior border is the pelvic inlet, and it can be divided into four major quadrants via the vertical median plane and a horizontal transumbilical plane. The abdominal cavity can also be divided into nine regions via right and left midclavicular lines and the subcostal and transtubercular planes. Remember that instead of the subcostal plane, sometimes the transpyloric plane is used to define the upper portion of the abdomen because it intersects many important structures, such as the gallbladder, pancreas, transverse colon, the junction between the duodenum and jejunum, as well as the superior mesenteric artery and hepatic portal vein. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.